So hello everyone, so welcome again. So this is basically the power rail. We gonna study and analyze the laptop power rails and signals. So please pay attention. This is a very exclusive and unique content. So please pay attention. I'm going to teach you in this video the power rails within a computer or a laptop. We gonna see the active states. We gonna see the description and the control signal. So as we have here in this table, so we have, for example, the VN or the input voltage, okay? So the VN is always active in S0, S3, S5, S4 and S5 state. Please, the states a very important approach to any technician who want to excel in this industry, okay? If you want basically to be a professional in laptop motherboards or computer motherboards repairing, you should know about these states. Okay, so I will put for you the whole video where I speak just about these states in the description box. Please watch that video if you want to, to know about the laptop states because without understanding these states you cannot understand how the computer works so in this video i will not explain to you the states because i will put for you the video in the description box the first power signal that we gonna know is the vn or the input voltage this is of course the main voltage about 19 volt 20 volt 18 volt depending on the type of the computer okay so this voltage basically is active active means present this voltage is present in all states for the motherboard Okay, so for S0, S3, S4, and S5. Okay, so the description, of course, EC adapter, we have 19 volts. Okay, we don't have any control signal for this kind of voltage. It is a basic or a primary voltage. Then we have the main battery. Basically, this one also is generated based on VN. This is main battery. As you can see here, we have main battery about usually... 12 volt here we have 10 to 17 volt okay so this is basically the main battery means the voltage generated by the battery if the vn or the adapter is not inserted okay the same in all states you can find this voltage then we have the vcc rtc basically vcc rtc rtc means real time clock here for this voltage basically it is the voltage generated by the CMOS battery okay about 3.3 volt as we have here RTC or real-time clock keyboard control power 3.3 volts uh, because we have here the keyboard power is powered by 3.3 volts okay and we have plus 15 volt of course this voltage you cannot find in all motherboards in some motherboard we have plus 15 volts okay in some we don't have but the majority of motherboard we don't have plus 15 volt as a main voltage also and we have the cpu core or the voltage for the cpu okay as we have seen in the previous videos uh, for the cpu the voltage is usually between 0.7 volt and 1.2 volt depending on the type of the cpu and we have seen also that every cpu has its own ids and based on that ids the control ic for the cpu know the exact voltage that have to generate for the cpu or the processor okay so this basically is active in s0 s0 means the laptop is on okay so please go to the description box watch the video about states laptop states and come back and watch this video 
this is an advice if you want to understand 90% okay so CPU core we have CPU core power as you can see 1 1.25 1.15 as I told you do you see between 0.7 volt to 1.2 volt here we have 1.25 okay almost and we have the control signal we called it V wrong the control signal here means an enable signal or a control signal that without this or those control signals we cannot get this voltage this is basically an input okay then we have 1.05 volt this voltage also is for the processor and for the north bridge but this voltage is especially to feed the bus between the cpu and the north bridge we have here fsb means front side bus okay front side bus basically the front side bus is the i mean the bus that connects between the processor and the north bridge please let me see if i have here the block diagram and see whether we have fsp or not so we have the processor we have basically the north bridge this is the fsp do you see we have fsp front side bus okay we have 667 800 megahertz the speed is increased here so we have fsp this is fsp so without 1.05 volt the, the the data will not transfer here okay means that voltage is the voltage that carry out or carry the data to pass between here and here and and of course in bi-directional okay so we have fsp as you can see fsp power 1.05 volt so means if we have this voltage the cpu core is present for example 1.15 volt is present for the cpu okay and also the power for the chipset for the north bridge is present but we don't have this voltage means what please in the comment below okay so if we have the voltage for the cpu is present and the voltage for the north bridge is present means we have this voltage we have this voltage but we don't have this voltage that feeds this bus what do you understand here please answer in the comment below so then we have 1.05 vm okay so this basically here we have the same voltage but here the the only difference here is the the type of signal uh, exactly the the amount of current in every voltage this one is used to feed fsb and this one is used to feed other circuit and we have here as you can see this is the control signal i e m t o this is the control signal we're gonna we're gonna go and see exactly uh, what is this kind of signal in the next in the next slice okay then we have plus three volts that is present in S0 state. This is the control signal. We have 3 volt SAS present in S0 and S3. Do you see 3 volt, 3 volt, 3 volt, 3 volt also here. So you can ask, and what is the difference? Why we use many kind of 3 volt? Here, of course, these 3 volts are not the same in terms of current. Okay? You can find, for example, 0.5 milliamps here, 0.9 here, 1 milli, etc. Okay, and of course, here also we have the control signal is different. The control signal for this three volt is, as you can see, main D. For this one, we have SAS on. For this one, we have S5 on, etc. So please don't be panic i will go with you step by step until you understand 
everything about our about schematics so basically i will we gonna see many many uh, schematics for many laptops so my goal here and my objective is to know the process and the right uh, the right process and to be methodical and logical in terms of analyzing troubleshooting and uh, I mean addressing the issue within a motherboard I don't like to to work work in any motherboard randomly no for me I don't work randomly when I get the motherboard I try to make a visual a visual inspection about 30 seconds and then I go and I have the process to follow and I detect the failure in two in two minutes maximum I told you before two minutes maximum you can give me any motherboard any kind of motherboard I'm sure I'm, I, 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 I told you the truth I basically I, I repair over than 1000 laptop over than 1000 laptop I repair it without any problem okay so that's why I again this experience troubleshooting quickly the motherboard here basically just three volts as you can see here uh, for C this one V3 uh, volt SAS is present in S4 and S3 3 volt S5 present in S0, S3, S4, etc. Okay, so as I told you before, for 3 volts, there is a difference in terms of current and the control signal. Here we have also 5 volt, the same for 5 volts. We have 5 volt, but the I mean the goal or the purpose is different. This 3 volt, for example, will feed the USB connectors. This 3 volt will feed the hard disk drive motor this 3 volt for example will feed the other parts in the motherboard okay we have here plus 1.5 volts the control signal is the main d we gonna understand this this control signals in the next slide we have 1.5 vm okay the control signal this is the control signal the same as we have here for 3 volts okay then 1.8 volts so this is basically for the memory we have ddr core power the control signal is sus without this control signal this voltage will not be generated 2.5 volts this is the control signal is ddr voltage for terminals okay voltage for terminals will be the half of 1.8 volt means 0.9 volt this is this is basically the the control signal we have ddr command and control pull up power so this is the 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 drv reference okay okay because in every controller and every circuit or control ic it generates the voltages output voltages based on some references we called it reference signals okay the same for example as if you have a reference manual that you use to do a job the same for the ic it has some reference signals that always should relate to that reference signals to generate an accurate and exact exact output voltage okay so we have here as you can see the vddA means basically for audio okay we have audio analog power 5 volts okay this is the control signal main on so when you find for example the same control signal for here main or main or here main or always you have s0 state because each control signal is present in a specific state then we have plus 3 volt for clock plus 3 volt for LAN as you can see here this is the control signal okay 1.25 volts present in a state 0 control signal etc okay so I hope that you understand a little bit about the power signals so please if you have any question or any suggestion 
or if you want to add something else please in the comment below and of course in the next video as i told you before we gonna discuss of course the power sequence it will be one of the most important videos of course the power sequence please don't miss out this power sequence video because by enters understanding this power sequence you can now do uh, HIC and uh, the role of HIC and how basically do uh, I mean the blueprint of the motherboard how the ICs are are uh, positioned in the motherboard and how voltages and generated okay so tomorrow we're gonna study basically this this uh, power sequence or power block diagram so thank you very much and please don't forget to subscribe like and share the video so see you tomorrow with another video